the full lifecycle use case. So um, again, it's important to have an understanding from end to end of how the customer interacts with your product, but this is before they even know that the product exists to the very end when they're either you know, getting rid of your product or they're telling other people about it. So how do you imagine or um, understand the full interaction with the product? So this is a very interesting step that it's, it's quite closely related as well to the sales process because again, if you think about how you sell to the customer, then understanding the full life cycle use case is important because you want to understand how they get in the beginning and how they maybe upsell or upgrade at, at the other end. So it's important to have this understanding of end to end of what's going on. Um, otherwise, you probably don't have a full understanding of, 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 uh, of how you're going to get it out there. This is one particular um, framework, I suppose, for creating the, the life cycle use case. So from the very beginning there, where the person determines they have a need for something, um, and then they, there's a catalyst to push them towards uh, buying or acquiring some kind of product, to finding out about the different options that are available to them, to analyzing those options and filtering down to hopefully acquire your product, installing it, using it, getting value from it, and paying from it. Determining value is, is again, it's kind of important one to think about for later on because when you're charging um, a certain amount of money for your product, you need to try and figure out, does that price make sense in terms of the value that the person is, is getting from it? So, you know, having an understanding of actually how much value they're getting from it is, is an important one. I was talking to somebody recently and um, yeah, I was, I, was in a, I was in SAP in Germany um, uh, the week before last, uh, talking to our entrepreneurship teams. And there was one particular product I was trying to get a handle on how much were they actually saving for, for a person uh, going down this route with their product as opposed to going down the, the route with, with, with the alternative. And I tried to quantify it in terms of value because they were having trouble figuring out how much they should be charging for the product. Um, and I said to them, well, another way you can do it is you can actually look and see what is the amount of value that they're getting from it. And then you can charge a portion of that. You can charge the full value, but you can charge a portion of it. So it could be, you know, we, we have a figure in this is an entrepreneurship of about, of about a sixth. So you could say, well, I'm going to charge somewhere like in the range of a tenth to a fifth of the value. And that could be my price range. So it's, it's not about how much it costs to make something, but it's about how much value the customer is getting from it. How do they pay for your products? How do they buy more? How do they upsell, upgrade? Um, and how do they tell it? So if you think about buying a car in this process here, um, you know, understanding how they figure out they have need for a car, what pushes them towards buying it, how do they look for their options, how do they pick your particular type of car, how do they get it, pay for it, get services, buy upgrades, um, trade it in for a next car, and so on. You're trying to think about the full end-to-end -end cycle. How are they telling other people about it at the very end as well? And there's two, I suppose, important parts here. One is obviously the entry point in terms of understanding where they are and where they're looking. And the other is kind of at the end there in terms of how do they tell other people about what you have and how do you create this kind of you know, viral or word of mouth thing at the end as well. Um, so here, here's an example of, of uh, any questions so far? All good? Okay, so here, here's an example of, of a particular product which is called Philby. And Philby is basically solving an issue in terms of furnishing a house and uh, carrying out a decor re renovation in your home where typically what somebody does is they, they figure out, oh yeah, I want to do this, I want to. So at the moment, uh, my, my wife and I are talking about um, um, redoing our bedroom, getting rid, rid of the furniture and replacing all the furniture with new furniture. Um, so how, what's the process that somebody goes through in terms of doing this? They research and plan stuff online. They might look for pieces of furniture online. They see something that looks really good. They um, maybe go along to uh, look at some similar ones in the shop. Um, they buy it. It gets delivered for some reason, something goes wrong, they don't like it, it doesn't fit in after all, maybe it doesn't match the color scheme as well as they thought it was, they return it back and so on. Um, so this is kind of a, I suppose, a process of, of how stuff works already in, in one particular scenario. Um, and there's various issues along the way here. So the premise for Philby was to try and come up with a better way to, to carry out home decor. And it was through the use of um, a collaborative platform with I suppose multiple uh, sources of, of advice along the way, but also different ways to compare the different different offerings from different types of shops, not just going to one shop, but being able to see 
and visualized offerings from different shops in a kind of a, a 3D planning mode as well. So they wrote out this particular um, uh, use case where, you know, starting off from understanding where the person wanted to design their, their, their room, there's probably a standard set of rooms that they want to, um, that, that they may want to re renovate, or maybe somebody can actually enter the dimensions and, um, you know, upload pictures. I did this recently actually with the IKEA uh, planner. They have, a, they have a 3D tool where you can basically lay out your room, you can recreate it, you can draw on your windows and doors, and then you can start to drop in the furniture to get a very good um, feeling of what it would look like. I must actually get a, a screenshot of my IKEA planner for future presentations, because again, it just gives you a good idea of what you can actually do as well online. Um, customers can then uh, get furniture from multiple retailers, so rather than being limited to your one local retailer as in the previous example, so actually, again, telling about my own story, we, this weekend we went looking in two or three furniture shops online, uh, physically in Galway, rather than doing it online, we decided we would go and have a look at some things. But you get bored after a certain amount of time, you only have so much time to start wandering around to different shops. It would be better if I could have seen the range available from a much larger bunch of retailers rather than, um, than being limited to one or two. Um, and then they, they, they created this collaborative element where you could design with the crowd, you could have decision-making with pro process with family and friends, and then you could ask, actually get help from a pro designer. So there's, a, there's an upsell here in terms of you're paying somebody to help you design your, your, um, your layout in, in, in a better manner. Uh, Real-time feedback. So you can see anyway, a, a quite fully-fledged um, lifecycle use case here for, for Philby. So again, here's a worksheet which, which you can use. This is from the Discipline Entrepreneurship Workbook. Um, and this is pretty much uh, looking at those 10 steps on the, on the, on the slide here we had. So for each of those 10 steps, um, who's involved, when does it happen, where does it happen, what, what, what is actually going on, so how, how is it happening, and then anything else you need to do. So can you actually describe for each of these steps? And again, some of these may change a little bit for the type of product you have, so maybe um, upselling is, is very important and it's kind of left out here or maybe it's um, the different parts here that just don't apply. But it's, it's a good starting template if you can fill out these boxes here in terms of who, when, where, and how you've uh, at least attempted to have an understanding rather than assuming, as many people do, once I create my product and I put it out there, that suddenly people will instantly buy it because that's not always the case. So you have to make sure that you understand the needs and the catalyst to take action. These are different things like triggers, um, times of the year when people are more willing to buy or when people have to buy, whether it's using a budget, or solving a particular problem or going on holiday or whatever, there is often a trigger or catalyst to take action. Have you an understanding of that? Where do they find out about the options? Is it through magazines? Is it through blogs? Is it through just an internet search? Is it by talking to uh, colleagues or friends? Have an understanding of that. How do they filter down? What's the most important thing that would be important to them in terms of, of uh, selecting your product? Then how did they get yours? How did they pay for it? How do you streamline the paying process? Is it better to spread it out over time? Do you do it at one point in the year? Do you uh, facilitate, facilitate online buying? What's actually going on there? Understanding then as well in terms of how they actually get your product and use it and install it. Everything from you know, the packaging to day-to-day um, -day usage, you want to have an understanding of that. The value, as I mentioned, that's again quite important. It would be good to think about what is the amount of value that they get out of your product so you can again think later on about pricing. Um, the customer you already have is the easiest one to sell to again. So how do you get them to buy more of your product or how do you get them to upsell from the products you already have? And then ultimately you want to have this word of mouth viral thing going on in terms of telling others. So fill out, filling out all of these is, 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 a, is a very important step. So the, the, I suppose the main thing here is that the use case should be the full life cycle. You don't want to kind of just start somewhere in the middle and then kind of work your way through that. You want to think from very end to end process because Again, people often make assumptions of that first part there where they will discover your product. So think of the app store, you know, somebody says, oh yeah, I'm gonna make an app to do whatever. And as soon as, it, as, as it's in the store, people are going to start downloading it. I'm gonna have 100,000 downloads. Well, what happens before that? Um, how does a person realize that this is the thing they're looking for in the first place? So you need to think about the steps leading up to that rather than assuming that this is your start point. Okay, so it has to be the full, full life cycle. Any questions so far?